let's see. Why don't we do something a little different today since it's Father's Day. Let's, uh, all the fathers, uh, if they stand, fathers, grandfathers, um, you know, God, God's the one that ordained the family and uh, instituted the family, and, and the world's pulling the family apart. And I'd just like to have a prayer over all you dads right now. Uh, <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are our Father. You are our Father through creation, but most importantly, you're our Father through salvation, that uh, as we accept it, your Son is our Savior. We were adopted into the family of God, and we thank you for that. Lord, as the world pulls uh, the families apart, even though uh, the laws in our land might change, the Supreme Court might re uh, redefine the family, you are the one that instituted, Lord. And Lord, all these men before you here today would just like to pray, lift them up, give them the strength, the strength that only comes from you. And Lord, when we're discouraged, we just ask you to encourage us and help us to love our wives, love our children, and uh, most importantly, help us to raise our children to follow you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. you guys to stand as we uh, worship together this morning. So our, our scripture to open up this morning is from Romans 8, uh, 22 through 27. For we know that all creation has been groaning as the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. And we believers also groan, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory. For we long for our bodies to be released from sin and from suffering. We too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as his adopted children, including the new bodies he has promised for us. We were given this hope when we were saved. If we already have something, we don't need to hope for it, but we look forward to something we don't yet have. We wait patiently and confidently, and the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we we don't know what God wants us to pray, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying, for the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will.
So good morning, and thank you for joining us this week. I just had a, uh, yeah, just the awesome privilege of being with the youth this week in Columbus, Ohio for the City Challenge Program, which is kind of an inner city missions program of our conference, and uh, always a highlight just of, uh, of my year, um, well, we only get to do it once every two years, and it's just an uh, awesome opportunity for us to learn more about Jesus and then go apply it into the city through homeless outreach, through uh, just asking people to, if we can pray for them and for praying for different things in the city, and uh, the youth did great, and they will tell us more about it um, next week, so look forward to that, uh, but it was just an exciting time to, to see God moving uh, there in Columbus. And so, happy Father's Day today. Uh, fatherhood is just an amazing calling and privilege given by the Lord. We have the opportunity to see a child grow physically, learning to walk and to talk. We get to see the expressions of joy and amazement as children experience something for the first time. And that's one of my favorite things about being a father, is just seeing simple things that like we're used to now that aren't that amazing. And uh, just seeing kids like just that wide-eye amazement at, um, as they learn it for the first time. We get to witness our kids growing emotionally as well, uh, going from crying over peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to navigating losses and disappointments in a more healthy way. And uh, at least I'm assuming we get to that point at some, some point down the line. Uh, <laughs> there's hope. Uh, and there, there are many, many less glorious moments Thousands of diapers to change, late nights, and fear and hurt on a level that only those closest to us can inflict. But through it all, we have an awesome opportunity to preach the gospel every single day to our children. Our presence points to our Father in heaven and how he is always near to us. And when we fail and apologize to our kids, we show them it's okay to be imperfect. And that our perfect God walks with us as we grow and stumble and find our way. And many of us have had great fathers or father figures who modeled life well, and I'm so thankful for that. Just so thankful for that. And there are those of us who did not have present fathers or who had poor or strained relationships with them. And Father's Day can be a painful reminder of that need in us for guidance and approval or love that isn't met. And we have a, that desire for closeness, for respect, for love, and for affirmation from our earthly father, and it's painful when that need isn't met. But it points to a greater need for closeness with our Father in heaven from Psalm 68, uh, 5 through 6a, as Mike already shared part of. Um, a father of the fatherless, a defender of widows is God in his holy habitation. God sets the solitary in families. So God can fill and heal those gaps left in our lives, both supernaturally and through faithful servants who step in and show the love of Jesus to those in need. But we have a perfect Father in heaven, and Jesus is our example of God on earth. So this morning, I'd like us to look at Jesus' example of his relationship with his Father in John 15. For examples of how they interact with our Father in heaven, with our earthly fathers, and as fathers to our children. And as followers of Jesus, let's strive to model that relationship to our fathers and as fathers to our children. But before we dive in, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we just praise you for this beautiful day. We thank you that you are a good, good father who loves us. You've made us into a people, to your people. And Lord, I am awed and humbled by that. Lord, I thank you for good and godly fathers who point us to you. And I thank you that in the, the failures of earthly fathers, that, Lord, you never fail. And you are there for us and can heal and fill gaps left. And so, Lord, we look to you. Amen. I thank you for this morning. I pray that you will be opening our hearts to your word and that you will draw us closer and closer to you, that we will live as you are the vine and we are your branches. We can do nothing apart from you. So let us rest in that and live out of that truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So yeah, we'll start in John 15, starting in verse 5 this morning. 
This is Jesus speaking, and he says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. So before Jesus gets into specifics with his relationship with the Father, he starts with the importance of closeness, and especially of closeness with Jesus, closeness with God. And here Jesus is getting at the absolute necessity of closeness with him in our lives. We can do nothing apart from him. Nothing. And we were never meant to do anything apart from him. If we're not connected with him, our life, we are like a withered branch, weak and brittle and dying. They're not good for a whole lot. They're brittle, easily broken, and sometimes strained or non-existent relationships with earthly fathers can feel us that way as well, leave us feeling that way as well. But if we live in Jesus, in his love, our strength is constantly renewed and we have all that we need to do what we were born to do. And Jesus has come to restore that closeness with our Heavenly Father so we can live as restored image bearers of our God. And in verse 8, Jesus gets at the Father's desire and provision. God is glorified when we live in Him and produce good fruit that comes out of a right restored relationship with our Heavenly Father. God sets us up for success by providing a way for us to be in relationship with Him through the redemptive work of Jesus on the cross. And God desires the very best for his children and sets us up to get there. And Jesus, I just love how God, God's heart there is shown in like he wants the very best for us. And he's sent Jesus, his only son, to die in our stead so that we could have that restored relationship with him. He sets us up for the greatest success that he wants for us. And Jesus continues on describing this amazing restored relationship that he died to bring about. In verse 9, as the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So Jesus here says to abide in my love. And I love that picture of abide means to live in. To live in his love, to do everything you do out of that love of Jesus, to to set up your camp in the love of Jesus. Everything you do everywhere you go comes out of that base of operations that's out of the love of Jesus. Too often we try to do things for God or to do good on our own rather than starting with that relationship with him out of that love from him because if we're not filled up with the love of Jesus, we're not dumping anything good on those around us. We're pouring out of our emptiness or whatever we have and not from the love of the Father. So live there. Set up our camp there and operate out of that love. That is how we are to live as God's children. And that's how we desire our children to live, knowing that we love them and that whatever happens, they can come back to us and that's the Father's desire for us. Jesus desires the very best for us. So when we obey him, we will live in that love because we are trusting that what he calls us to is the best for us. We've got to trust that. We've got to believe that, that what Jesus calls, what he instructs, he has our best interests in mind, and he does. He wants the very best for us. And Jesus is pointing to his relationship with God the Father, showing that he submits to his will, trusting God, and that we should do the same, trusting the Lord. And that stood out to me of how much just our kids trust us. And I was challenged with, am I seeking out and setting them up for what God wants for them? What success looks like for them, not necessarily what I want for my kids, but what God wants for them. They trust us, and our Father in Heaven models desiring the very best for His children, giving them all they need to get there. 
And that's our model in raising our kids, pointing them to a deep relationship with our Father in heaven so they can live out their intended purpose. But Jesus doesn't stop there. He keeps on going with his relationship with the Father. He says, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. As a parent, I know one of my, the biggest desires I have for my kids is for them to get along, right? <laughs> it's uh, very frustrating when they don't, and they, uh, they know exactly how to push each other's buttons, and they're really good at it. And we're that way. <laughs> we know how to push each other's buttons, and we do it. And our God has a Father's heart. He doesn't mandate that we agree on everything, but we must love each other. At the end of the day, there's no getting out of that. And love covers a multitude of sins, and that helps us to treat each other as siblings in the Lord. And in verse 13, Jesus is again getting at setting up others for success. This is laying down your life, and it's not just dying for others. It's so much more than even that. It's living with the desire to set others up to be the best they can be, to live as them to live. And that's our Father's heart for us and our example to follow in raising our children and loving those around us. Laying down our life a lot of times looks more like the everyday boring decisions of sacrifices to be able to provide for our children physically, emotionally, and spiritually. It doesn't seem glorious, but those are some of the most heroic decisions we can make to be there, to be present with our children, pointing them to Jesus throughout their lives. And then God goes even further, another step with his relationship with us, as Jesus talks about in verse 14. He says, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. Jesus calls us friends when we trust him, when we obey him. He invites us in on the plans. God has revealed his plan of redemption and salvation through Jesus to us, his children. And that just reminded me, just stood out to me of how much my dad modeled that, this verse to me. Of like the father calling us his friends. Uh, growing up, I remember spending countless hours, my dad and I, we loved uh, four-wheelers. We loved riding four-wheelers and we didn't have any at first and dad is a huge researcher so he would spend hours and hours and hours researching the perfect one to get before we would do it and he would invite me in on that plan and tell me about how what all it would take to get there how much we would have to save uh, what all the steps would be the work to do to take care of it he invited me in on the plans and that just yeah stood out to me of how much that modeled this type of relationship that Jesus is talking about. I've invited you in on the plans. I've shown you my heart, my desires, my passion. God's done that. He's invited us in to those plans. And yeah, my dad and I, we aren't that close now. We've got things to work at. And I miss and I grieve that closeness. But then that desire to be close with my earthly father, the Lord has been revealing to me how close he can be to me and how he can fill those gaps and invites me to lean on Jesus more and more for strength, for affirmation, and for our value and worth. And I know I'm not the only one who has a less than perfect relationship with our, with our father. And if we're in that boat, if you're in that boat, don't give up. Keep working at it. If that door is open. But through the struggle, let that desire, that God given desire for closeness with our earthly fathers, draw us to our heavenly Father who can, can and desires to fill any void we suffer. And remember to give our earthly fathers grace because we fail too. We all fail. None of us are perfect. There are no perfect fathers out there. And fatherhood is hard. 
Again, there are no perfect fathers on this earth, but we have a perfect heavenly father. And he chooses imperfect fathers on purpose because in their imperfections, we point to the perfect father to fill those holes. We were not a people. And God has actively drawn us to himself and has made us a people. His people. And that is humbling and challenging as we seek to follow Jesus' example. And I love in verse 16, Jesus says, You did not choose me, but I chose you. And appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you, that you love one another. Jesus told, chose these 12 disciples. They were not the best and the brightest of their days. They were not voted most likely to change the world in high school. And not even people you would expect to interact with each other. But Jesus chooses them, pours into them, sets them up for the best, and loves them through their many mistakes and shortcomings and squabbling with each other and failures. And our children didn't choose us. Let's choose to set them up, to live life to the full in Jesus, whatever that looks like for them, recognizing that God may have very different plans for them than we do. And Jesus ends this section saying, these things I command you, that you love one another. And ultimately, the measure of success in all of our relationships including with our fathers and our children, is love. Because love is enough, Jesus calls us to love enough to work hard at restoration and relationships. To love enough to call back to Jesus when we see each other straying. To love enough to build up, to give encouragement. And to love enough to focus more on the good and growth we see in each other than on the negative. Worship team, if you would come and join me. That's Jesus' commandment to us, to love one another because that love covers a multitude of sins. And we have a perfect Father in heaven who loves us perfectly. That's our model and our example. When we fall short, there is forgiveness. When our fathers fall short, there is forgiveness. And God is able to fill those gaps and be a father to the fatherless in all areas of our lives. So in both the good and bad of relationships with our fathers, let's view those situations as reminders of our heavenly father who succeeds where earthly fathers fall short and who loves us far more than even the best earthly father ever could. That is our God. That is our father in heaven.
We have an awesome and perfect Father in heaven. Amen. Let's go to him in prayer. Father, we just thank you so much for your presence with us. We thank you for your desire for the very best for us, even when that's very different than our plans for us. And so, Lord, we just submit to your will, trusting your loving kindness, knowing that you desire the very best for us. And so, Lord, I just pray that you will help us to walk in your commandments, living in your love, setting about everything we do out of that base camp of your love for us and returning to lay our heads in that love that you have poured out over us. Lord, I thank you for earthly fathers and for the ways that they point us to you. And Lord, I pray that you will be with us who are earthly fathers, that you will guide us as we seek to represent you well and to love these, your children. And Lord, in our failures, we trust your forgiveness. And we forgive our fathers for their shortcomings. So Lord, we love you. We thank you. We give you all the glory. And I pray that you'll be with your people this week as we go into this world around us. Let us go in your love, sharing that to all those around us. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen.